Hey everyone, welcome back. In today's video, we will learn how to implement auditing using Spring Data JP and Hibernate. First of all, what is auditing? Audit is the process of tracking and capturing changes. And what changes? These are the changes which are done to data over a period of time. So whatever data set we have available in the database, it changes over time during updates, during deletions and all that. And auditing is the process of capturing those changes, information about those updates so that we can go back in time and we can check what was the change which was made to a particular data set. When we use Spring Data JPA and Hibernate, there are two approaches to enable the automated auditing, which means we don't have to do anything. We just simply provide the information using metadata and annotations and the framework will do the job and we will cover both of them. Before we do that, first let's cover the setup that we currently have. So first of all, we have this database and this is the database that I'm going to use. So make sure you have a running database. And then we have a very simple Spring Data JPA project. So in the application properties, I have provided the details of the data source. And then we are simply enabling one of the basic properties like show SQL and DDL Auto, which is just for the demo. Then coming to the entity, we have a very simple entity with name task. It has a primary key and a, another column which is title. Then we have the Spring Data Repository for the task which is task repository and in the main class we are using the application runner. Injecting the task repository we are saving the task. So when we run this application it will insert a new task record in the task table. So let's quickly do that to make sure that the setup is working fine. And here we can see an insert query in the task table. So if you go back to the database and select the data, we see one record, which is to do. This is the same record that we added. Now, if you go back to the code base and uh, if we run this code, but let's also update the same record. So what I can do once we have inserted the record, let's change the same task. So now we are making an update and we can change the title to to do one. And then after waiting for two seconds, so we are introducing a delay so that we can verify the update time. We will again call the save method, but this time it will update the existing record like this. And uh, we can add some log messages here as well. Insert and update let's rerun so when we insert the data first we see the insert query and after two seconds we see an update query and if we check the record in the database we see the updated title to do one but you see we inserted the record then we made an update but there is no information when this update was made if we don't have any auditing enabled, we only have the latest update in the table in the database. And that's why we use the auditing so that we can track those changes when a particular update was made to a certain record. So now let's enable the auditing to this code base. How do we enable the auditing? Well, it's pretty simple because by default Spring has everything that it needs to enable the auditing. We just need to use the annotation. So the first step is to enable the auditing, which is the annotation enable JPA auditing. So this is the first step. When we use this annotation, Spring will enable the features related to auditing. The second thing is we need to make some changes to the entity that we want to be audited. So here we have this entity task and we want to audit this task entity. We want to store the audit information for this entity. To do that, we need to use another annotation here which is we need to provide something called entity listeners and in this entity listeners we need to provide a particular listener and this listener is auditing entity listener and notice this class is coming from spring data jpa so we need to pass this we need to activate this entity listener 
then in this approach the approach that we are discussing right now we need to add few attributes to track the tracking changes and these attributes are created by who created the record and then created date when this record was created and in the same way we need last modified by and last modified date so when we enable this entity listener we need to add these attributes in order to store or capture those changes and then we need to add few annotations which are created by then last modified by for create date it is created date and for last modified date it is last modified date so once we enable the required annotations and the attributes spring data jpa will now track this particular entity so whenever this entity is going through a change whether inserts or updates this listener will make sure that these attributes are filled properly and correctly so now that we have added the required attributes and annotations what if we run the same code again now in this case notice first we see the insert block because we are inserting the record so this time in the task table it is also inserting these additional attributes these additional columns and similarly in the update block when we are updating the record after two seconds to two to one we are updating all these attributes as well so let's check the database this time if we select the data we see the title to do one because we updated it but we also see the values related to created date last modified date and notice the difference this is very close to two seconds this is the same delay that we introduced here you can see this is 23 and this is 25 but if you can notice we still have created by and last modified by column null because we haven't provided the username spring data jpa doesn't know anything about the user who's making these changes by default so we have to provide the user information so that it can use that information to fill these columns let's see how we can do that so for this we'll add a new component so that is going to be we can put it in the service or in the model and we will name it user provider and this is going to be a spring bean so we can annotate it with at the red component and it must implement something called audit aware and this interface is also coming from spring data it expects a data type so we will say we will provide this string data type because this is going to be a string value then we need to implement the methods from the interface and this has a single method get current auditor which is empty by default but we can provide a value now for this demo this is a hard coded string let's say user a b c but in a real project we can implement a complicated logic here to derive the current user maybe the logged in user so on and so forth now that we have this user provider which is implementing audit aware if we read on the same application now we should see the created by and last modified columns filled with this username all right let's check the database and this time we see the user is correctly populated as user abc so spring will use this particular interface or this particular component to get the username now if you notice we are now capturing the information related to who made the change but this information is stored in the same table and also it doesn't store the multiple changes over time all right this only stores the last update that is the limitation of this approach a it stores the data in the same table and second it only stores the last update it doesn't store the whole series of changes done to this entity so now to handle this we will cover 
the second approach which is by using hibernate onwards we can implement a more sophisticated form of the auditing so let's try to do that as well so what we will do first of all we need to add a new dependency in order to use the hibernate onwards so i will go to my pom.xml and uh, here i will add a new dependency and this is going to be hibernate onwards and this is coming from org.hibernate.orm let me reload the project and in the meantime i will leave this entity as it is let me refactor a little bit dao must be in parallel not under entity so in the meantime what i will do i will leave task as it is uh, because i will commit the code as well for the reference and uh, for the second approach we will add a new entity a very simple entity same as task so i can say this is reminder first we will define the simple entity as we always do so that is going to use entity and data annotation and uh, let me copy the same attributes from here primary key and the title okay and similarly what i can do i can copy this repository as well duplicating the repository as well this is going to be reminder repository and i need to change this one all right and in the main class what i will do i will disable this execution because we don't need this anymore we will now focus on the second approach but i will copy this part will create a new application runner like this and we will now focus on the reminder repository okay r dot set title do something so first we will insert the record same as before and then we will update the record okay so i will say set title do something else then a delay of 2 seconds and then we'll update the same record so that's the current setup we have now how do we enable that level of auditing using hibernate onwards for an entity and that entity in this case is reminder so how do we do that well when we use hibernate onwards it is pretty simple we need to add a single annotation which is audited and that's all let's now run the application and see all the changes that hibernate and spring data jpa will now do to store the detailed auditing of the entity and this time if you see there is a lot going on in the insert block we see three tables first of all the main table which is the reminder then we see something called rev info which is the revision info it has a single column rev timestamp revision timestamp and we also have a separate audit table in this case with three columns like rev type title rev and id we will see it in detail in few seconds and when we update the entry in the update block we see it it is updating the reminder table which is the main table but it is also updating the timestamp in the info table and inserting a new record in the audit table all right let's check the database now if we refresh the schema we should have tables related to reminder so first of all this is the main table and if we select the data in this case in the main table we only have columns related to the attribute so we have a single record with two columns and it is exactly what we defined when we defined the entity and then we have the rev info if we check this particular table we have two timestamps basically when the update or the change was made to the record 
because first we inserted the record and then an update was made so we see two records and similarly in the audit table we have two records this is the first record first revision and this is the second revision now notice this column which is rev type it represents the type of the operation so zero means add it means a new entry was inserted so when we inserted the record for the first time it had the id 1 and the title do something so the type is zero and one represents an update was made so when we updated the entry it captured that change as well where the id was one and the title now became do something else and similarly it has another type which is two which represents the deletions so when we use hibernate onwards it stores a very detailed view of tracking for an entity now what else we can do with hibernate onwards so here we are using the default name for the audit table that can be overridden using an annotation and similarly if we go back to the uh, entity here by default it will audit all the attributes all the columns but but let's say we want to exclude some attributes from the audit then we can use an annotation called not audited and if we use this annotation on a particular attribute a property that property will not be audited so it's as simple as that all right and similar to what we did in the approach one where we created the user provider we can also provide a user using hibernate onwards so here if we check the documentation of hibernate documentation of onwards here we can see something called uh, revision entity so you can see an example here where we are defining a custom revision entity by using this annotation revision entity and custom revision entity listener so here it is providing a field related to username and later when we are defining a listener custom revision entity listener it has a method new revision and we can use the same entity that we defined here to set the username and later this revision entity will be used by hibernate onwards to fetch the user details so we can do the same thing using hibernate onwards as well and here you can see there is something called audit reader factory that we can use to fetch the historic data from the audit table different revisions different versions so you can refer this uh, documentation in detail i can share the link in the video description as well so that's all for now that's all for this video in this video we explored both the approaches to maintain the tracking and auditing and hope this helps so thanks for watching see you in the next video